What's up YouTube, Tubo Logan here, back again for hopefully the last basement garage project to get the Ninja back up and running. Um, we've gotten a lot of our big projects done, changing out the battery, changing out the spark plugs, cleaning and oiling the air filter. Uh, those videos are back on the channel, I'll put a little annotation up here on the screen so you can check those out if you haven't seen them already. Uh, but all those things are done, I've got the gas tank back on the bike and it's up on the stands and we are about ready to do the oil. The Ninja's not really due for an oil change right now, just because I just did it uh, a couple months ago and I haven't really rode that much since I, since I did it. But I figured since everything's apart, I'm already doing preventive maintenance for all the other stuff, I'd go ahead and do the oil change now as well. And also, it's down here in the basement garage instead of outside my parking lot, which is a pain. Such a pain because the parking lot's like on a hill like this, and so I have to like precariously angle it on the stand to make sure that it's just right that I can do the oil change and I gotta do it between my cars and it's it's a whole thing. So we're gonna do it here and I can film it and show you how to do it. Super easy process. Um, you're not gonna have a lot of problems. The biggest thing is just, again, like all the other projects getting to it, gotta take off some of the fairings to get down there to the oil filter and everything. So uh, haven't even started the bike since we did all the projects. So <laughs> hopefully it will start so we can warm the bike up. Um, you'll see actually the first startup and um, I'm sorry if it might get a little loud, I've got to open up the basement door uh, because the downside to the basement garage, while it does have AC and it's nice, um, is that, well, it's a basement and it's kind of enclosed and I'd rather not die of monoxide poisoning. Um, so, because uh, <laughs> that wouldn't be good for my wife to come home from this weekend and find me dead in the basement. Um, so yeah, uh, we're going to go ahead and Fire it up, get it warmed up, because that's going to be your first step, and um, we'll go from there. All right, so as I'm sure you know, because you guys are smart people, um, to do an oil change, the first thing you got to do is warm up the bike or car or whatever you're doing the oil change on, uh, just because it gets that oil warmed up, gets it running through, and makes it a little more viscous. I think that's the right word. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start it up and get her warmed up to temperature. I won't put you through the whole video because it's going to be, you know, a little while, but we'll go ahead and, uh, and start. So battery turns on. That's a good sign. Um, and we'll flip this over and see what she does. <laughs> it worked. Woo. So in my list of greatest ideas, starting the bike inside a basement garage is probably not high on that list. Um, <laughs> it is a uh, and you can kind of tell the fumes, uh, it got a little lightheaded and so I, I had to step outside, took my dog out and I still got the door open so you can probably hear all the, all the noise outside. So sorry about that, but just want to make sure this place is aired out before I start working on it. But uh, we're about there. It's, um, it's not too bad now. So I figured I'd show you my oil pan just because it's kind of an integral part to getting this job done. I got this one at Walmart. It was only like six or seven bucks and it is awesome. I love this thing so much more than just one of those plain plastic drip pans. Uh, as you can see, it's self-enclosed. It's got a lid that goes over this top part here. So once you're done with your oil, you can just kind of seal it in there and it keeps it from sloshing around and you can kind of store it if you need to until you can dispose of it. Um, it's got this nifty little grate over the top. Oh, it's starting to drip a oil from my last change. Um, so if you accidentally drop your oil drain plug, uh, it won't fall into the oil and make a huge mess. It just falls around that grate. I can't tell you how many times I've accidentally dropped an oil plug into oil and you got to fish it out and it gets all nasty. Uh, don't drip. Um, it's also got this nifty little plug here on the side. So whenever you're done with your oil change, you can kind of take this old oil and pour it back into your, I guess, the container that your new oil came into and you can take it to go get disposed of it in an auto parts store or something. So it makes, makes life so much easier when you do an oil change compared to, you know, just one of those standard little bowl things and I hate those things. I hate them so much and they always make such a big mess. So uh, if you don't have one or you're looking for something a little better, definitely go for one of those. Like I said, they're real cheap at Walmart and you won't regret it. All right, so now that the bike's warmed up, garage is aired out, garage, basement garage, whatever. Um, <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and start the oil change. Uh, I've already got my pan positioned up here under the drain and I went ahead and took the filler plug out so it doesn't uh, 
it can create the vacuum or not create the vacuum. I don't, I don't know the physics of it. Uh, <laughs> but that's on the other side I didn't want to show because it's kind of useless. But you know where your filler plug is, just take that out. So first thing, we're just going to take our oil drain plug out. So to take this out, all you need is a 17 millimeter socket or wrench. Uh, I've lost my socket somewhere. I have no idea where it went. And of course, because I, I need it for a lot of things. So we're just going to use a wrench. You're just going to put this on here, and I've already loosened it up a little bit. And uh, you're just going to turn it. And as you loosen it, you should start seeing your oil coming out. And there she comes. And that oil is not too dark, but like I said, it's never a bad thing to go ahead and do a change. And we're just going to sit here and let this thing drain for a little while. Shouldn't take it too long, but eh, it's just got to take the waiting game. And it's a good time to have a beer, I guess. A couple little drips left, but with most of the oil drained out of the pan, we can go ahead and move to taking the oil filter out. Uh, in my opinion, this is one of the most frustrating things to do with this bike. What makes it so frustrating is just the placement of the oil filter. As you can see, it's sitting here kind of perpendicular to where our drain hole is. And that's my dirty drain hole. Um, and it's dripping here, and it's going to keep dripping, and probably a little more is going to come out once we take this off. And so you've got to catch what's coming out of there and also catch what comes out of the oil filter and it, it all just kind of falls out as you take it off and it's going to get all over the radiator hose here and it just makes a mess because you can't i mean with this as great as this pan is it's not wide enough in the opening to catch what's coming out of here as well as what's coming out of here uh, so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to slide a towel up underneath our plug hole for right now and try to catch what I can from there and then we will place our actual pan under the oil filter. Uh, for oil filters I like to use the K&N brand uh, and it's part number KN204 for inquiring minds that's what fits the ZX6R and I like the K&N just because it's got this little bolt on the back here and it's a 17 millimeter bolt and it makes taking this thing off so easy you don't need one of those annoying wrench things that like crushes the oil filter while you take it off and it, it just makes life a whole lot easier when you're taking it off and putting it back on. So only bad part is the radiator hose gets in the way so you gotta kinda use just a wrench and I lucked out because I got these sweet craftsman ones with the little clicker. So you can just socket it off pretty easily. There comes what's inside the oil filter. And like I said, you know, most things, like most cars, they have it, it just kind of sits up underneath like that, and you just pop it off and nothing really spills out. But not this one. Not this one at all. I just realized my arm was in the camera the entire time, so I'm sorry. If you want me to act it out again, it was just unscrewing and taking it off. Ah, don't fall. This grate also is awesome because you can set your oil filter down like that and it just lets it flow out. So we'll let that drain some more and we'll pick back up once it's done. I think about all the old oil is about drained out of the bike uh, so we'll go ahead and put the new oil filter on. I like to just take a little dab of the old oil on your finger and kind of run it along this little gasket here on the oil filter and that'll get it ready to seat up properly with the bike itself. And I'll take a little bit and wipe down any of this that's dripping off of where the oil filter goes and we'll go ahead and place this right back on. And when you get this, once the gasket is seated, you're just gonna turn it three quarters to a full turn. And so we'll just watch for when it seats and there should be our seating, and we will take our wrench. And if I do it the right way, wrench it down. And so we'll mark that guy right there as our turn spot. That's about a quarter. And a half turn. There's three quarters, 
and let's just take it around just a hair. So we'll go somewhere between three quarters and a full turn. Yeah, just for the sake of, we'll do a little more. And there's our new oil filter on. And like I said, oil gets everywhere from this oil filter. I can see some got down here. I don't know how. I have no idea how, but it's there. Make sure we clean everything up here. Wipe it off. Another cool thing with these K and N filters, I, I noticed it when I was reading the box just now. Um, they've got a little hole. I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but it's right there. But the little nut that you wrench it down on is actually pre-drilled to go ahead and put safety wires. So if you're doing track days and stuff like that, that's pretty cool. Uh, I didn't know that until I read about it. Now that the oil filter is back on, we'll go ahead and put the drain bolt back in. I went ahead and wiped it down. We'll give a little wipe down on the plug hole and just go ahead and start hand threading it in. And it's finger tight. We'll get up the old handy dandy torque wrench. To make sure it's seated down properly. And if you're wondering, torque values for this is 22 foot-pounds. Look at that. Old Logan. It's got them torque hands. Already knows the specs. That thing. That was actually kind of surprising. Oh, all right. I've got everything closed back up and we can put the new oil into it. All right, so now for the easy part. We're just going to be refilling the bike with oil. Uh, got our oil fill plug right here, which we took the plug out and the holes right there. And I uh, got my funnel here. And this is just a cheap. Like auto zone long neck one, but I like the long neck ones just because they can kind of sit up a little bit and get down in there because it's kind of like a weird with all the internal stuff. The the funnel doesn't like to sit in there and get the big fat wide ones. They like sit like that. So I like this long long neck one just because it makes it a little easier. Um, I'm just gonna be using 10W40 oil. Uh, that's what the manufacturer specs call for. And with a complete oil change with the oil filter removed, you're going to need about 3.8 U.S. quarts of oil, uh, which this has four, so we're going to be using most of the jug here. So go ahead and start filling it up. Like with everything on oil change, slow and steady. It's going to take a little bit of time. And don't flame me. I know this says Yamalube. Everybody can get over it. <laughs> it's all the same oil, just whatever brand is on the jug. It's also the only thing that the dealer had when I went there. It's always a good idea when you're filling your oil to check periodically just to make sure you're not getting any leaks around your uh, your drain plug or around your oil filter. Everything looks pretty good so far. All right, and that's it. She's all filled up. Um, also, while you're checking, you want to make sure you check your sight glass down here and make sure your oil level is between your two notch marks. Hopefully, y'all can see that on the camera all right. But uh, make sure you're not overfilling it because that is a giant pain in the butt if you do that. You got to get a whole I mean, syringe things and like suck the oil back out and do whatever. But everything looks straight on here. I haven't seen any leaks or anything, so that's good. Um, we'll go ahead and pop the plug back on. Which this thing can be kind of a butt. For whatever reason, like the way that it sits. Whenever you're trying to tighten it down just right, like your hand's hitting the frame and hitting all this stuff, so it can be a pain, but not a big deal. But make sure you get her down good and tight. And especially your hands are oily too. Forgot to say that. Your hands are going to be oily, and now you got to grip something to turn it. But that's on tight. Everything looks good. I say we're finished. All right, well, that's it, guys. Got the oil changed. Like I said, not a hard process at all. Uh, you're just going to get a little dirty, but hey, that's the fun in it, right? Um, last thing I'm going to do is just start the bike and let it run a little bit and make sure that uh, there aren't any leaks or anything that pops up like that. Um, with all the headaches we had uh, just from starting it down here and everything, I'm going to do that outside, uh, which is going to be a pain, but it's worth it not to, you know, carbon monoxide and all that. I think that was the last thing we had to get done for the bike, so she should be good to get back up and running. Uh, I'm going to clean up the fairings some more and stick them on, and we'll be back to riding here very shortly. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope this was helpful to anybody that has a 2005 or 2006 ZX6R, um, or any bike for that matter. It's, it's, it's mostly the same, you know, torque values might be different, placement of oil filters and things like that are going to be different, so, um, but it's an oil change. Like, it's not that hard to do. Uh, 
you got to do them. And so hopefully this was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions about anything, tools used, uh, I mean, it was one tool we used. Uh, well, two if you count me. Um, <laughs> one tool uh, and it, just 17 millimeter. That's all you need. Um, but yeah, so uh, I think that covered it. I think we got everything done, but ask away if you have any further questions or anything like that. Uh, I'm happy to help. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Uh, with everything done, I can't wait to get back out and riding. It's so nice out. It's actually, you know, it's humid as crap today, but um, it's going to be great, guys. I'm ready for this year to get up and running. It's I know it kind of sucks. It's like May now, and I haven't gotten to ride yet, but we're here. Man, we got everything ready. The bike sounded like it was running really good whenever we started it up earlier, so we'll see how she rides once we get it out on the road. Um, I'm super excited about it. So to avoid uh, me just getting in and rambling and everything, I'll, I'll go ahead and cut the video out here. So as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Later.